Before we get into that sort of comparison of the traditional strategy, the four Porter's Five Forces, uh, which I'm using as a proxy for traditional strategy and blue ocean strategy, I just want to wrap up this discussion of business level strategies uh, in, in general uh, with a discussion of the risks associated with each of the business level strategies that I just described. First, cost leadership. Um, there are a number of things that can undermine cost leadership. First, your source of cost advantage could become obsolete. And then the focus on cost may cause you to overlook important customer preferences. So, you know, in the process of trying to keep things cheap, the customer may no longer like your product because they expect you to have added on certain features, certain innovations. And then typically, although there may be significant barriers like logistics to doing uh, a cost strategy, if those barriers don't exist, cost is the easiest thing to imitate. If I can generate products at a, an equally cheap level, I'm in a position to be able to imitate you uh, relatively easy, easily I should say. Differentiation uh, has a different set of risks. Customers uh, may believe that the cost of differentiation is too great. This is the situation I described earlier where the engineer or the actuary puts too many bells and whistles. Each of the bells and each of the whistles costs money. Um, the customer may not be pay willing to pay for all of those features because the customer only wants, say, three out of five of those features. And so you end up with a product that is incredibly innovative and incredibly unsellable. Differentiation may also cease to provide value uh, for which customers are willing to pay. For example, if um, over time other companies are able to layer on features that are comparable to yours, um, you're no longer innovative and they may no longer, the customer may no longer be willing to pay if some of the other companies are able to produce the product in a way uh, that they're able to keep costs um, more minimal. Also, experience can narrow a customer's perception of value of a product's differentiated features. The more I understand about what you do as a company, the more I can determine whether those features really are truly helping me out every day or whether those features are just novelties that I could live without. It's not just understanding what you do, but understanding how I use the product you sell. So sometimes I get something that has all the bells and whistles. I get excited about it. And then at the end of the day, I... Um, start using it and realize I only use three or four or five of the features. A classic example of this has been the use of um, Office productivity suites. As much as Microsoft, Microsoft Office or the equivalent have many different features, um, often there are customers out there who only use six or seven of those features. So as those productivity suites become more and more complex, and more and more expensive, customers look to go someplace else. For example, uh, I had suggested in one of my recent emails that for those of you who don't have Microsoft Office, and I'll put in one more plug for this right now, uh, if you don't have it at home and you have to go to the school to be able to use a computer that's loaded with Microsoft Office, and if you don't want to pay the price it costs to have at least a stripped down version of Microsoft Office on your computer at home, you should really consider looking at OpenOffice.org, which is which was a um, open development version of a productivity suite, which is now so supported by Oracle, um, and it's free. Now it is probably on par with Office two two thousand three, so it's at least two versions behind Microsoft Office in terms of functionality. But if you don't have any form of productivity suite or if largely used productivity for simple spreadsheets, straightforward word processing, and basic presentations, then um, you'll have more than enough capabilities in open office. Uh, and because it's compatible with Microsoft o Office, in effect, it's able to, they're, they're in a position to have essentially imitated many of the features and even break down the barrier of of the fact that most people use Microsoft Office by having um, compatibility features built in. So that's a good example of, of where more features isn't always better, especially when your competitor can offer the features that people want the most of for free. Um, and finally, counterfeiting. And that becomes a problem, you know, for example, the probably one of the most differentiated products available is a DVD of a movie. If I want to see 
the newest movie that's available in the marketplace. I want to go see the hit movie, um, and I'm going to go to it today. Or you know, I, I'm going to go see uh, the Green Hornet, or I'm going to go see the King's Speech, or any of the other movies that happen to be showing at the time that I'm recording this uh, presentation. Uh, and that movie is also available in the form of a counterfeited DVD for much cheaper than the eight or nine or ten or twelve dollars it can cost for admission plus popcorn plus soda. I might be willing to buy the counterfeited version of the movie. So even though the product is highly differentiated, if I really absolutely positively want to be able to see True Grit or The King's Speech or The Green Hornet or some other movie, then um, then it is more it is differentiated. I'm not willing to see another movie. If if I'm somebody who wants to see the King's Speech, I probably don't want to see the Green Hornet on that day, and vice versa. Um, but if somebody can counterfeit the movie, who knows? Uh, depending on my level of honesty, I might be willing to watch that movie. And we know that the counter, particularly in the film industry, there are counterfeit DVDs coming out on the market almost immediately every time a movie is released. So that's an example of where differentiation could be harmed by uh, counterfeiting. In terms of the focus strategies, cost or differentiation, a competitor may focus on a more narrowly defined competitive segment, but um, and so the competitor may outfocus the focuser. So in the instance where a f company that's very focused thinks they've got the right segment, could be pushed out of the marketplace by a competitor who figures out that the segment that's really buying this product is narrower than the company thinks. And by narrowing their focus, they're able to make sure that the product is both more cost focused and or more differentiation focused or both in a way that appeals to the core segment that's really buying this particular product. Also, a company competing on an industry-wide basis may decide that the market segment that they're serving um, it could be focused and they could move into a more focused segment um, and find it attractive uh, as a market segment for them to reach. So uh, the big company that's all over the place sees a small competitor focusing really well. The big competitor may decide to squeeze the small competitor out of the market by uh, taking on that, that segment um, focus. And then con customer needs within a narrow competitive segment may become more similar to, to those of the industry-wide customers. So the only reason I have advantage is if my customers in my segment want something different than the larger, uh, broader segment as a whole. If my customers can be served by companies that serve the broader segment and to the extent that they are able to either differentiate on the basis of, uh, they, they are able to either can compete on the basis of cost or differentiation, um, maybe the broader um, se the my the segment I've been focusing at just gets subsumed into uh, the uh, the broader segment. And then the challenge in the integrated strategies is that you get stuck in the middle. Your cross structure is not low enough for for an attractive pricing, but your products aren't sufficiently differentiated to create value for target customers. So, in effect, you fail to implement either a low-cost or a differentiation strategy. Um, this is probably the, the, the sort of critical challenge and one of the reasons that, frankly, the traditional strategic thinking of people like Michael Porter uh, has been that this is, one of the, this is difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. Whereas, as you'll learn in Blue Ocean Strategy, the view is this is precisely where you want to go. And Blue Ocean Strategy gives you a set of tools that you can use to think about how to achieve an integrated strategy where you've created value innovation uh, that allows you to compete in a way that you really um, have sort of frozen out the other four um, areas of or approaches to business level strategy.